Okay, good morning to everybody and uh, thank you dear Tatiana for this uh, kind invitation. It's uh, a great, great pleasure for me to be here and uh, to share with, uh, with you and uh, your colleagues uh, uh, this new opportunity, as you said, to treat uh, patients uh, um, with uh, a less toxic uh, schedule of uh, chemotherapy and uh, the possibility to offer them uh, a better quality of life. Um, the roadmap of uh, metronomic chemotherapy, sorry, because I have to, to balance between the English presentation, which is on my screenshot, and the, the Russian one on the, on the biggest screen. Um, the roadmap of uh, metronomic chemotherapy in breast cancer started uh, um, starting uh, uh, since more than uh, uh, 10 years ago with uh, the first uh, preclinical studies being done uh, between uh, 2000 and 2005. We then reached in uh, the 2005 and 2006 uh, the first uh, uh, regimens uh, together with uh, uh, metronomic chemotherapy plus uh, other uh, chemotherapy regimens. Uh, here you can see uh, the cyclophosphamide metotexate combination or the combination of plus uh, thalidomide or uh, UFT. In the next uh, 10 years, uh, there were a lot of attempts uh, to combine metronomic chemotherapy with uh, anti 2 agents, especially trastuzumab and uh, metronomic chemotherapy plus bevacizumab. We have to wait uh, some more years uh, to reach uh, some results um, between metronomic chemotherapy and uh, endocrine therapy, and I'll spend some words at the end of my presentation uh, to share with you the idea that uh, we, in some cases, were the precursor of the modern combination between CDK inhibitors and endocrine therapies. The new metronomic uh, regimens uh, reached uh, the clinical practice uh, more recently, in the years between uh, 2010 until 2016. And these are really the most uh, um, clinically studied uh, metronomic regimens. Finally, since uh, 2014, we are uh, um, still actively working on patients profiling, uh, trying to define uh, which is the better patient to be candidate to metronomic chemotherapy, and uh, obviously with uh, new or more potent metronomic drugs. Let's have a brief look about the mechanism of action and the preclinical data. Uh, we now know that the prolonged administration of drugs without break periods induces a deep effect on vascular repair. And this is very important because um, here you can see this, I always say that this is my favorite slide because here you can see in the, no, sorry, you can't see, but uh, okay, now you can. Um, here you can see that uh, this is the classical method to administer chemotherapy. You can see that in the first part, uh, when uh, the blood concentration of the drug uh, uh, increase um, until uh, reaching uh, the myrotoxic uh, effect, you have a deep uh, antivascular effect. But uh, the whole antivascular effect uh, is completely dilated in the second part uh, of the cycle. This is a classical three-weekly schedule the one, for example, we use with the taxanes or uh, antra-based uh, regimens. And here you can see that in the second part, uh, the antivascular effect is completely dilated. Why? Because you completely lose uh, uh, the needed concentration of the drug to have the antivascular effect. On the contrary, with uh, the metronomic regimens, uh, you are able to administer uh, very low doses uh, of drug uh, continuously without uh, break periods, without uh, this up and down uh, curve. And here you can see that the antivascular effect 
is uh, um, um, last, lasts for the whole period of metronomic chemotherapy delivering. That's why we can now uh, be able to confirm that only metronomic chemotherapy has an antivascular effect together with an antitumoral effect. Uh, another mechanism of action more recently uh, studied and developed uh, is uh, the one by which metronomic chemotherapy may decrease the mobilization or viability of bone marrow derived SEPs. You know that the SEPs are the precursors of endothelial cells. Here you can see in, uh, um, in the left part of the slide that uh, there is a, a strict connection between uh, bone marrow uh, CEP, bone marrow seps, which uh, reach uh, the blood vessels uh, and uh, throughout uh, the upregulation of uh, HIF1 alpha factor and the action of uh, VECF or FGF can stimulate the tumor vascularization. However, if you, if you use a metronomic chemotherapy, uh, you know, uh, you see here that metronomic chemotherapy acts on uh, HIF1 alpha factor, acts uh, on down regulation of uh, VECF and FGF, and finally, and finally determines uh, what we need uh, in the clinical practice, which means uh, that uh, we have uh, to reach uh, an antivascular effect without the use of antivascular agents, such as, for example, uh, bevacizumab. At the end, you will have the die, the death, sorry, of the of uh, the of the blood vessels. Um, are these? Uh, um, are these mechanisms of action demonstrated? The answer is yes, definitely now. We have a lot of data mainly based on uh, metronomic vinorelbin. Here you can see the data coming from uh, the Greek group, which uh, in some cases can be defined as the father of uh, metronomic chemotherapy studies. Here you can see that only metronomic uh, doses uh, of uh, vinorelbin are able uh, to down regulation, here you can see the low dose in comparison with the, the standard dose. And he, you can see that only the metronomic administration with very low doses of the drug is able to down regulate uh, the proangiogenic factors and uh, to up regulate uh, the antiangiogenic one. These uh, preclinical data are based on uh, the effect of metronomic vinorelbin on HUVEX. HUVEX is a preclinical model of uh, um, antiangiogenic uh, anti action. We now have uh, some uh, new data coming from uh, our, uh, sorry, coming from uh, my group, my um, university uh, partner. And uh, we tested um, the same uh, uh, doses of metronomic vinorelbin on uh, HUVEX alone or together with the metronomic doses of a 5-FU. You know that uh, my group developed a metronomic combination of vinorelbin and capsitabine. And we wanted to know if uh, the combination of both drugs was more active in angiogenesis inhibition rather than the single agent, even if given in a metronomic way. And you can see that between the two drugs, 5-FU or capsitabine from one side and vinorelbin from the other side, only, only vinorelbin is able when delivered at metronomic doses, it's able to inhibit the angiogenic, the tumor angiogenesis. But the most important results, sorry, I have some problems to coordinate between my, slide, my presentation and, and this one. Um, 
we obtained uh, another important result because uh, until this uh, preclinical data, the only data we had uh, were on HUVEC, so on angiogenesis. And we thought that metronomic vinorelbin was not able to, uh, to be directed against the tumors, against the tumor cells, but only through the mechanism of angiogenesis inhibition. Now we know that at the same drugs, metronomic vinorelbin is able to inhibit HUVEX as well as uh, MDA cells. And you know that MDA is the preclinical model of a triple negative breast cancer uh, cells. And this is a very important result because now we know that uh, when we use a metronomic doses of uh, vinorelbin combined with the capsitabine or 5-FU, we are able to act on angiogenesis and on the tumor cells as well. We know now that there is another important mechanism of action and it's the depletion of T-Rex and the modulation of myeloid-derived suppressor cells. We all know that immunotherapy is one of the keystone in this moment in the a great variety of cancers. We now know that it doesn't work uh, not so well in breast cancer, but uh, through metronomic chemotherapy, we have the possibility to downregulate uh, T-Rex because metronomic chemotherapy and metronomic vinorelbin in particular acts uh, against the T-Rex. Oh, sorry against the, the precursor of uh, T-Rex, the so-called uh, naive uh, T-Rex, uh, before the differentiation in mature T-cells. And we had uh, brought some data at the last San Antonio meeting. We are now actively working on uh, the full paper because we have the data that uh, if we treat patients, uh, breast cancer patients, uh, HR positive ones, uh, uh, which are rather less uh, sensitive uh, to immunotherapy. With the metronomic chemotherapy, we are able to detect in the blood of the patients uh, a deep down regulation of T-Rex, uh, which uh, can act uh, as a way to, uh, to, to, to improve uh, sensitivity of the cells uh, to immunotherapy. And this is a uh, one of the new area that we are, we are exploring. Um, let's move to the first uh, clinical data between, uh, in the years uh, between 2006 and 2015. A lot of uh, papers have been published of metronomic chemotherapy in association with targeted therapies, mainly trastuzumab and bevacizumab. And uh, here you can see that uh, more or less uh, we are able to obtain uh, an overall response rate of approximately 50%, a clinical benefit rate of 60%, and the median time to progression uh, is up to 40 weeks. So quite important results, but uh, we have uh, to keep in mind that this kind of chemotherapy, in comparison to standard chemotherapy regimens, has a very, very low toxicity, especially severe toxicity, well below the uh, percentages of toxicity reached by different regimens. What about the association between metronomic chemotherapy and endocrine therapy? Here we have three different papers, mainly done in Italy. The two important of them is the one by Alberto Bottini in, in Cremona. And generally speaking, we can reach results uh, of combining uh, metronomic chemotherapy together with endocrine therapy, chemo, uh, endocrine therapy such as letrozole or anastrozole, we're able to reach an overall response rate of up to 30%, a clinical benefit rate of 50%, and the time to, median time to progression up to 26 weeks. 
we now know that the way by which metronomic vinorelbin acts on tumor cells is through the cyclin dependent pathway. So the next area to explore, especially now that we are talking a lot about the combination of CDK inhibitors, such as ribociclib, albociclib, or abemaciclib, with the endocrine therapies such as letrozole. I think that uh, it, this is a sure an area to be explored. I hope that uh, some of this cooperation could see your participation, the participation of Russian centers. It would be a great adventure to be done uh, all together because uh, if uh, we can demonstrate that metronomic chemotherapy acts uh, inhibiting the same pathway of the, the, the pathway inhibited by the cycling, uh, cycling uh, inhibitors, the costs are very different and we can save a lot of money. Uh, let's move now to um, the combination of uh, metronomic chemotherapy, uh, single agent or combination with other different chemotherapy agents. Lot of paper, sure, uh, I hope that uh, the most uh, interesting uh, for you could be the results of uh, my work, of uh, my papers. Um, we published in 2014 the first results of the Victor One study, which is the combination of uh, metronomic oral vinorelbin fixed dose 50 millig uh, sorry 40 milligrams uh, three times per week together with the fixed dose doses of capsitabine 500 it just means one pill in the morning one after the lunch and the, the last one after the dinner in the first study we uh, determined the maximum tolerated dose of oral metronomic vinorelbin which was subsequently studied in the Victor II trial that we published in uh, last year in uh, breast cancer research and treatment. Um, just to have a brief uh, overview of uh, the Victor II study, primary aim uh, of uh, the study was uh, the clinical benefit rate uh, and secondary, secondary endpoints uh, were uh, the overall response rate uh, the disease control rate, uh, as, well as, the, as well as the progression-free survival or the time to progression. Um, sorry, you can't see because I didn't press the right button. <laughs> now you can see. <laughs> Here um, you can see that uh, um, it's easy to remember for the patients because they have just to remember to have the, these two pills of oral vinorelbin on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday continuously without a break, and uh, three times per day of uh, oral capsitabine. These are uh, the results. The clinical, we obtained a clinical benefit rate in up to 50% of the patient. It means that half of our patients were able to have a disease control. And I think that is uh, the main aim that we would like to have in our patients, patients without disease progression. This is clinical benefit rate in the whole population. Sorry. This is the clinical benefit rate in the whole population, and uh, this is one in the ER positive uh, patients. Um, Progression-free survival rate at one year is up to 25%. It means that after one year of uh, chemotherapy delivery without interruption or without break periods, a quarter of your patients will be free of the disease progression. And I think that this is uh, the most meaningful data to think about. This is very important for our patient not to have a disease progression. And now we are able to reach with the Victor regimen as well as 
the so-called VEX regimen, which means the victor together with the, the association with the cyclophosphamide, as uh, demonstrated in uh, the group by European Institute of Oncology. Um, the ASO ESMO meeting recognized the importance to have a statement on metronomic chemotherapy. We will now have an update uh, this uh, November in Lisbon during the next, um, uh, the next ABC conference. In the last one, it was uh, stated that metronomic chemotherapy is a reasonable treatment option for patients not requiring, requiring rapid tumor response. The better study, the regimen is a CM, but now we have a lot of data based on vinorelbin. Sure, randomized trials are needed, but they are ongoing. Two of them, one of them is an international one, and the other one will be a, um, a, national, uh, um, a national study. Now, if I have to suggest to you which kind of patients uh, to be treated with metronomic chemotherapy when you go back to your hospitals uh, on Monday, I can suggest to you that uh, we can uh, safely and uh, uh, demonst with demonstrated the data, we can treat the patient with uh, ER positive uh, HER2 negative disease, bone meds, uh, but uh, visceral ones uh, as well. Patients are relapsing from uh, endocrine therapy, not requiring a rapid tumor response. So please keep in mind these uh, patients' characteristics because uh, when you will have a patient like this one, you can think about uh, metronomic chemotherapy, I hope. Which is my clinical point of view, some facilities for the patients because blood tests uh, may, mm, may be done just every three, four weeks. There is no need to have a frequent uh, blood test and this could be an advantage for patients who live far from the hospitals. Please, if you plan those reductions strictly when clinically needed, because now we have the possibility to reduce the dose uh, if you use a single agent uh, oral vinorelbim from 50 milligram three times per week to 40 milligrams uh, three times per week. Don't reduce uh, below 40 milligrams because it has been demonstrated that, that we have no clinical effect with uh, a dose uh, low than 30 milligrams. There is no need to stop chemotherapy, otherwise you lose the antiangiogenic effect. Please reduce, but don't stop the chemotherapy administration. Uh, what about the ongoing uh, trials and future perspectives? We have a chemo switch maintenance trial in triple negative breast cancer. I think it will be a very important uh, trial uh, with important results for our patients because now you know that the gold standard is to treat a triple negative breast cancer patients with um, platinum-based chemotherapy, taxan-based chemotherapy for up to six, eight cycles, but then we have to interrupt because of toxicity and what about these patients? We don't have data at this moment that uh, uh, prolonging uh, the administration of uh, the same regimen, regimen could be feasible. I don't think so because uh, of uh, neuro, neurotoxicities uh, or uh, um, renal impairment, kidney impairment. So I think it's important to have some data with uh, oral drugs. We have uh, another study comparing uh, uh, maximum standard dose. This is the Tempo Breast study, which is uh, going to close because uh, we quite reached uh, uh, the planned number of patients and we, we will wait for important results from this trial because this is a direct comparison between standard vinorelbin and the metronomic one. We have another trial as maintenance therapy in uh, ER positive patients. Another one in HER2 positive disease. This is only an Italian trial. 
in which uh, uh, we combined uh, uh, metronomic vinorelbin with the subcutaneous trastuzumab and the primary endpoint is a quality of life uh, due to the combination of uh, uh, these two very easy, um, very easy uh, regimens. I'm very proud uh, to present you the um, uh, real life experience. Uh, we have uh, submitted uh, some data at the last ASCO meeting. And it's interesting uh, to see that uh, along five years, uh, the use of metronomic chemotherapy in Italy has deeply, dramatically changed. It moved from up to 10% of the patients until 40% of the patients. It means that we strongly believe in metronomic chemotherapy as a possibility to be offered to the patients, not only in later lines of treatment, but in early lines of treatment. And the activity of metronomic chemotherapy and metronomic venerelbin in particular is deeply different when you use in later lines than in early lines. We are able to reach approximately 45% of clinical benefit. We, um, so we have submitted some data at the upcoming ESMO meeting, and I think it will be a pleasure uh, for me next year to share with you again some important results. And finally, we are planning a, a study together uh, uh, of the combination of metronomic chemotherapy with uh, uh, immunotherapy. This is a, a, just an idea that we are working on. Um, This is the Victor Free study, the first one, the Tempo Breast, the Maverick study, the Victor 4, Victor 6, and the Victor 5 study. So a lot of victors uh, in, our, uh, in our lives. Let's go to the take home message and conclusion. Um, I can uh, affirm now, today, that uh, metronomic chemotherapy is a target, uh, targeted therapy. It, uh, um, uh, it's possible to avoid the use of biological agents and their costs as well. Metronomic chemotherapy has a significant efficacy with minimal toxicity. All the severe adverse events were below 5% in comparison to up to 20-25% of taxanes-based regimens, anthracyclines-based regimens. No alopecia for our patients, no nausea, no vomiting, and that's uh, it's uh, very important. It could be a good option for selected patients because uh, it's uh, well tolerated. It's administered fully orally, relatively low cost, and uh, the ability to target. Uh, oh, sorry, to target anti. Angiogenesis is much more important. I cannot uh, go back. Why? Please, uh, can I have the previous? Okay, thanks. No, no, the the last one. Oh. Ah. The last one, just, uh, um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't run, doesn't work. Oh my God, <laughs> we start again from the very beginning. Okay, I move uh, quickly forward all the slides uh, and animations. Uh, and uh, my last, no, okay, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> um, no, I particularly, um, uh, okay, to this uh, first, last slide, because I would like to thank a big, big thank to all uh, the Pierre Fabre staff uh, for uh, all the support and uh, the warm uh, hospitality. And to Tatiana as well, it's uh, really a great pleasure. Thank you very much for your attention.
Спасибо большое за замечательную лекцию, коллеги. Thank you very much for this great lecture. Perhaps any of you has um, an urge to ask question. Thank you very much for this great lecture. I've got a question. Uh, whether you use uh, urine metronomic therapy with capacitabin, an example, the raise of um, platelets uh, number in peripheral blood, thrombocytosis. Um. It's uh, important to note uh, that uh, we do not have uh, any serious, uh, it means uh, grade uh, three, four uh, adverse events regarding uh, platelet uh, reduction. We didn't have uh, any uh, severe uh, events uh, of uh, um, uh, platelet uh, uh, thrombocytopenia. Um, the combination between the two drugs uh, works better than a single drug. It's not your question. Sorry. I, uh, no. We have patients uh, with breast cancer or with colon cancer. And they, it's very difficult to differentiate the thrombocytosis, the high, the high number of platelets. Uh, whether it's um, side effect of metronomic therapy or some um, dysplasia. Therefore, I ask these questions. Whether you have seen the raise of um, the platelet number? Any raise in platelet numbers? Uh, no. In, nor in uh, the Victor 1, nor in the Victor 2. Uh, in any study and nor in the clinical practice. Uh, I know that this is a, a paradox effect uh, of uh, some drugs, uh, for example, gemcitabine. I know that uh, uh, this kind of a side effect uh, could be related with uh, um, an adverse prognosis uh, of the patients, uh, but we didn't observe. Marina, у меня небольшой вопрос. Marina, I've got a small question. Please, can you draw a picture of a typical patient for which you'd prefer to give a hormone therapy, uh, a oral chemotherapy, and B, metronomic uh, uh, chemotherapy with oral venereldin? The ER positive metastatic uh, patients. If uh, she has a relapse, uh, for example, on uh, liver, or uh, she has uh, a heavy uh, lung involvement, I think that um, I, I differentiate the patient uh, between uh, young ones and elderly ones. My first option in this kind of patients uh, is a chemotherapy. Standard uh, chemotherapy in younger patients uh, and uh, metronomic chemotherapy in elderly ones. Um, on the contrary, if I have a patient uh, with, uh, for example, only bone mats, uh, I try to have a first line endocrine therapy. I don't, don't know, we don't know at the moment uh, if uh, simple endocrine therapy or together with biological agents, we don't know, but. Uh, um, for sure, an endocrine treatment. Uh, if the patients uh, uh, didn't have uh, uh, an important benefit in the first six months uh, of therapy, I move uh, to chemotherapy or in some selected uh, cases, cases uh, to a second line the endocrine treatment. In the case I decided to move to a chemotherapy, this is the ideal patient for me to receive a metronomic chemotherapy because uh, metronomic chemotherapy can act uh, as a bridge between endocrine uh, oral treatments to uh, more aggressive IV chemotherapy regimens. And we have data that now demonstrates uh, that we can use uh, metronomic chemotherapy before and the standard regimens after and we do not lose any possibilities for the IV regimens. So this is my 
clinical algorithm in these uh, patients. Thank you. Thank you very much.